This video may contain affiliate links and or sponsored advertisement content. Using any affiliate discount codes provided in the video description area or throughout the video content to be used on third-party sites and or clicking on any affiliate links will generate a referral commission to the content creator, Kendra Gilbert. Thank you for your support. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kendra Gilbert and um, I apologize that it's taken me this long to uh, get this second um, video done, but um, I have uh, been super, super busy, so I apologize for the delay. Um, but I promised that I would um, do a tutorial video quickly showing you the process of um, hand painting your irises. Um, there is no way that I could um, really accurately and, and purposefully, meaningfully um, show you how I do it on, um, with the smaller scale sizes like this little four millimeter guy. It's just too small on camera and then I have to literally have this very close to my face in order to um, to actually be able to see what I'm doing. So um, I'm just going to show you on a much larger scale and then you can use these same exact techniques um, uh, on, a, on a smaller scale um, if you're doing um, oak doll eyes using my eye base mold um, for casting your eye bases. So if you're doing anything really super tiny like this, um, just take these same you know, um, the same bit of information and just shrink it down. <laughs> um, it's because there's really technically the same exact thing. Obviously, you're not going to be able to get as detailed with the little guys as you are with the bigger sizes, um, but hopefully this will help, um, you know, at least show you to some degree how, how I do a basic looking eye. Um, I could literally do 20 videos a day showing you different techniques, different color styles, different this, different that, different, you know, mediums and supplies. And I probably will, you know, do more videos in the future showing you um, different ways of doing things. But this video is just a, um, a bare bones, basic way of creating um, a really pretty iris for your eyes. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and set these little guys down over here. And again, this is just showing you one way to do this. There are so many ways to um, create your um, irises uh, for eyes, it's it's ridiculous. Um, one thing that you need to take into consideration before you begin is whether or not you're gonna be introducing the eyes to heat. Um, obviously, if you're gonna be baking these in uh, with like a polymer clay creation, you want whatever elements um, or whatever material that you use for the irises to be heat com compatible or resistant, um, and as well as the substrate material that you use. So um, just always keep that in mind because it's really, really important. You don't want to use anything that's going to melt like plastics or anything that, you know, beads or whatever that might um, react poorly to heat. What I suggest is before you doing that, um, just take that item that you're wanting to know if it can hold up to the heat, put that in your, in your um, oven on a, um, uh, you know, a surface that, uh, you know, is, is safe for oven use and just try it. <laughs> and see um, if it, you know, keep an eye on it and just try it and see what happens. Um, also keep in mind of uh, any kind of fumes that might come from any kind of melting plastics or anything. So you, you just really want to be very, very careful when you do that. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and um, I picked this eye because it has a slightly larger iris area and you'll be able to see it a little bit better when, we, when I go forward with the uh, tutorial. There's a lot of tutorial videos out there showing how to do these um, ball joint doll eyes and everybody's kind of got their own twist to them, and their own technique, their own way of doing things, their own preferences. So again, take this video and use it as you, you know, um, try to develop your own unique way of, and method of doing things. Um, you don't have to necessarily follow everything I say or do step by step. In other words, it's a very free and open space. Um, with, with this whole thing. So, okay, well, let's go ahead and talk about um, the first part, which is um, what the limbal ring area. Um, there are some molds out there, um, larger scale, that have the ring grooves. And you'll usually know that someone is using one of those eye base molds because you'll see this perfect ring going around the edge um, that's kind of thicker. And, um, you know, you can fill it in with whatever color you want, um, whatever design you want. And it makes it a lot easier to, um, to get a limbal ring area. But a lot of those, the molds that we have are just standard molds like this. Um, even my small base mold um, does not provide that ring. So you kind of have to create that yourself. So uh, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can, one, you can, you can paint the inside 
uh, if you do the paint, um, try to stick with a transparent, glossy paint. Um, gouache works really well. Um, something that's going to look nice whenever you amplify that um, with your resin. Um, you want to make sure that you get really close to the edge, up underneath the edge, so that you'll be able to see, even if it's a shadowy effect, um, th that limbo, that darker limbo ring area. Or your style, I might not even have one of those. There's so many different ways to do it. But if you want a limbo ring, um, this is one way of doing it. Um, make sure that your paint, whatever paint you use, dries thoroughly before you try to do anything else with the next step. So you really want to make sure it's nice and dry. Um, and uh, you have to be patient with paint, that's for sure. Um, I'm going to show you a technique using clay, though. Um, it's a little bit quicker, um, and uh, I think you'll appreciate it. Um, some people might find this a little bit frustrating at first until you get the hang of it but I find that it works pretty good. Um, first, you wanna find a darker color that you're gonna be using for the limbo ring. Um, I've selected the, the brown, the Fimo brown. Um, and, I, and I do use Fimo pretty much exclusively for this because it cures at 230 degrees. Um, and it just, um, overall, I, I just find that it's a really good product to use. Um, and I really like working with the Fimo brand products. Especially, I, I love the fact that it cures at a lower temperature. There is a, um, a, a new brand of clay that you can get. I believe this is at Hobby Lobby, or it might be Michael's, excuse me, I don't know now. Anyway, this Crafters Collection, it's a, it's a newer clay. that It's like their store brand clay, I guess. Um, I personally don't care for it for this because I find that it's too sticky and soft to hold design. But one good thing about it is, is that it also cures at 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry about that. Um, I had to pause the video for a second because I had company that I wasn't expecting. Okay, so back to this. So anyway, um, the Crafters uh, collection, it's just a little too soft, but the one thing that I like about it is that um, it also cures at 230 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, this clay comes in some other colors that are a little bit different. So I've, I have kind of played around with this brand in Fimo and have gotten, gotten some pretty cool like shades that you wouldn't normally find um, in polymer clays. So if you wanna kind of experiment with um, this brand clay with the Fimo, um, it, it actually, I mean, cause they both cure at the same temp. Um, it's actually really nice. All right, so once you select a color, and like I said, I normally like to go for a little bit of a darker limbo ring, but that not always, because it just depends on what kind of eye you wanna make. So um, for this first step, I just take myself a, a rather good sized ball of clay and I'll just pop it down into the center of the eye. And then I take a ball stylus, usually much larger than what my eye is, and I just kind of give it a good press down. And this is where um, patience is gonna have to come into play because you have to make sure you don't lift it up out of the the area um, or in the inside part of the eye, it, it'll lift up. Sorry, <laughs> now I'm struggling for words. Um, but anyway, it'll stick, the clay will stick and you'll pull it out is um, basically what I'm trying to say. Um, but if you really push down and because the ball is larger than the base, you can kind of like go move it around and it cuts, it makes a nice good cut so you don't have to fool around with using an X-Acto knife and accidentally gouging the edges of your eye. And then you have that first nice, good base color. And I want to see if, I don't know if my camera's going to adjust or not. I don't think it will. But that first base color is really important to get first. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate what I just did on this eye. And I find that if you do the same thing that you've done with the one eye with the other eye immediately, you get more of a cohesive pair. And you really want that color to be all the way up. So if you're looking at it and you're noticing that you didn't put enough clay in there and it's not all the way fully up to the very tippy top, do it again. <laughs> do it again. Be fussy about this part because it's really important. So we're gonna go ahead and stick that back in there. Give it a nice little squishy roux. There we go. Nice. Okay. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that down and clean up my fingers a little bit here. Remember, anything that you get on your glove or your fingers, especially color, will transfer over to a lighter colored clay, so just keep that in mind. I always use gloves. Um, that's another thing, too, when I'm doing this. I am, you know, I just have learned that it's better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> and um, I also am tired of digging clay out from underneath my fingernails. I use these here. They're called Pink Paws, and I get them one size smaller and so that they're super snug and you just put a little cornstarch on your fingers and you slide them right over it gives you good protection but it's not so much material that you can't feel you know you sometimes you just need to be able to feel what you're working on and the rubber doesn't get in the way like i can still pick up and it, it doesn't feel income uh, what is it called cumbersome it doesn't feel cumbersome <laughs> all right so we got both of these guys here boop, 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 boop. Yeehaw. Next step is your secondary color. And for this, I'm gonna use this white. Um, I usually always use white or transparent over the top of my darker color, and it's because the white will pick up my, complimented, my complimenting col colors and resins better, and um, I just find it works a little bit better for this. And again, anything that I'm doing so far can be easily duplicated on a much smaller scale, such as this little guy right here. The only difference is with this particular, with these, with my um, uh, eye base molds that I currently have, um, these were created with 3D printing technology and we decided to purposely leave the micro lines because it helps when you're coating these because of their small size and shape, it helps to grab a hold of coatings and things that you put on there. So just take care that you don't get clay or anything like stuck in between those little lines. So. Um, what I suggest doing is you can sand a little of that off if you want to, if you get something stuck in there, or just take a cotton swab and just make sure you clean that out really, really well before you bake the eye because you, know, you don't want to bake um, clay in, in the lines. Just keep it clean. That's basically the, the big part on that. My next set of molds are going to be more like this. They're going to be standard ball joint doll style eye bases, but at these smaller sizes. Okay, so here we go. Um, I want to use a clay ball that is smaller than the original so that when I put my clay ball down, I can still see the brown underneath. So, like that. And then I'm going to take another ball stylus this, not as big as the first one. And I'm gonna see if I can't lift this up. Here, I'll do it on top of this pan pastel. All right, so same process, just make sure you get it kind of in the middle. Make sure that this is clean, your ball stylus is clean. And press down in the center, and then go straight down until it extrudes out the side, and you hit that base bottom Give it a little twist and lift. Now you have an eye base and I don't really worry too much if I get like a little bit of clay in there. It doesn't really matter because you're gonna cover it up anyway. But if you wanted a completely clean eye, just wipe it out. All right, so there we go. Just kind of run my finger around the outside of the edge there to pick up any loose clay that might be Sitting on the outside. All right, so there's my limbo ring and my white palette for the next part of this whole thing. Um, now, I, I do like to have a nice good size dip going down inside uh, because when I go, if I, if, I, if I use a bead or something for my pupil and I push it down, I don't want my clay to rise up and and kind of like push out the sides. So always make sure that you know, you've got a good depth on your eye. If you wanna go a little deeper, just, I, I highly suggest if you're gonna do this to get these, they come in a set, but they're these nice ball, um, ball stylus tools. They really come in handy. All right, let's go ahead and move on to this next one. Same thing, we're just gonna push down 
and straight down. Give it a little twist. And there's the second eye. And don't get frustrated because it, you know, sometimes it doesn't come out. Sometimes, you know, it's, it takes time to kind of get used to doing it and to, um, you know what they say, practice makes perfect. So just stick with it and you'll be able to get it right, probably right the first time every time you do it. All right, there we go. So that's the second eye. Now, what's cool about painting is you don't have to worry about doing all that. You can just paint, but you won't get, um, you know, unless, unless you really like do a couple coats on there, to me, it's just like you don't get that same level of, of color on the edge. All right, so the next step is um, you wanna start texturing at this point, or you, you can at least, you can start texturing at this point. Let's talk about texturing. <laughs> um, so you can pretty much use anything to, to create texture in your eyes. Um, it depends on what you're wanting, what, you, what, you, what kind of effect you want. Um, when I make my witch eyes, I like nice, long, sharp um, you know, textures that kind of sprawl out like snakes away from the pupil. Um, for more realistic eyes, um, I prefer to have a lot of striations coming from the pupil outward um, in multiple directions. I think that's a, a nice effect. And that's probably what we're going to do today because it's probably the most basic um, thing that you can do. Um, so yeah, we're probably going to do that. Now, again, you might do this differently than me if you're already, you know, a ball joint doll eye maker. Um, so again, this is my personal preference, um, and there's nothing wrong with somebody um, doing it in a different way. This is just how I do it. So you can use all kinds of things. You can use these nice razor tools. Um, those are really good. Straight razor. Um, there's I've used everything from wire. I've used um, these bigger razors. I mean, there's all different kinds of things you can do. There's also different... Um, uh, types of pins with um, really, really sharp pinpoint um, uh, lines that you can do. Um, so, I mean, it's really up to you how you want to do this. So, um, because it's the quickest way <laughs> to get texture and I'm trying to save time on the video, I'm going to just go ahead and use my pen. And um, you're going to see where um, I'm just going to basically start in the center. I'm just going to kind of pick a center point and I'm going to do one line out from the center like this and then I'm going to turn it because it's up to you. I mean, you can have them overlapping, but I find if you want a more realistic eye that if you keep the lines a little bit more um, structured, it looks, I think, better. But if you cross over lines a little bit, it really honestly doesn't matter. You're not gonna really notice it. And being that this is really far away from my face in comparison to where I usually have it, have it I'm not really able to see. I'm getting older, you guys. <laughs> and my eyes are definitely um, not the way that they used to be 10 years ago. You can make them as um, heavy-lined as you want. I will suggest that you don't cut into the clay too much because then you are going to be inviting opportunities for air bubbles to form. At a later time. So let's go ahead and just stop right there. Let me see if I can get my camera to kind of zoom in a little bit better. There we go, that's a little bit better. so hard to see hmm. but just try to keep it somewhat uniform 
even if you overlap on your lines a little bit, you're not gonna, it's not gonna really matter a whole lot. All right, I'm gonna stop there on that one. And I, it's gonna look like a hot mess at first. I always tell myself to trust the process, kind of like when you're sculpting, at the very beginning, your doll looks like it's an alien or something from another planet. And um, you have to really trust the process because if you are to just look at it like it is, <laughs> It's like, oh God, you know, it looks like crap. So um, you just have to kind of push past that part uh, or that point and get to the other side. And once you do that, it's a lot better. Trust me. So again, Make maybe some lines a little bit heavier than others. Just don't really dig, dig deep, deep down inside because you will struggle with bubbles like you don't believe. That's like probably the one of the biggest problems that I have is fighting bubbles. But you know what? I've learned to kind of embrace them in some ways because I find that they add, <laughs> as long as they're not insanely big or like way too many of them, sometimes those little micro bubbles actually look really cool. Um, so I just decided not to fight them anymore and just kind of embrace them for just the, what they are, you know. They're going to happen. It's just part of it. So learn to love them. All right. I think that that's pretty close. There. I'm going to actually look at this one a little bit more up close. Yeah, we're good. This one could use maybe a little a few more deeper ones to match the other eyes. So give me one second here. I'm just gonna add a couple more deeper ones just so it matches up to that other eye a little bit bit better. Okay. And it is a little bit, I've got some brown in there and that's <laughs> Um, I'm not going to worry about it because my eye color that I'm going to be doing, it's going to blend really well in there all together, so it's okay. Now, you can go crazy with this if you want to. Um, you can take another texturing tool, like, I, I'm so upset, you guys, I, the, the tip of my micro rubber point tool, it ripped off. It came off. I use this so much. I've had this rubber tip tool forever. i got to buy me another one. I think I got this from more is more online a long time ago and um, so I'm going to be paying Miss Natasha um, her shop a visit <laughs> to uh, get me another one but these tools are really great for doing um, uh, texturing for eyes um, and um, but because my tip is broken it's not going to give me the same results as I'm used to getting um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the same process um, but with this tool here which is a blunt end it's not sharp on the end it's, it's kind of blunted um, but uh, go in between two of your lines. Um, just like, just pick in between two lines. And I want to see if I can't see it. Um, I'm trying to get my head close enough so I can see. And just kind of push in and down. And it kind of gives a little bit of a, an indention. And I don't do too many of these, just a few here and there to kind of give the eye a little character. Just a, a little bit of character. And again, trust the process. It looks like crap right now, but it won't. <laughs> okay. Do the same thing with this one. Find two lines in between and push it down, 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 down. One more down. Oh, I went off screen, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I just, uh, a little bit. awful doesn't it looks so ugly okay but just wait 
All right, so I wanna do these eyes and this funky blue, orange kind of color. So um, this is, I used to like take um, shavings off like chalk pastels like most artists do and um, just scrape some of the, the powder off and, and use that. You can still do that. There's nothing wrong with that. I have a huge selection of different colors and, and everything and, and that does work. But I really love these. <laughs> I love these and you can actually get these on sale sometimes through Michaels um, with free shipping. I got most of mine, I wait for their, um, their sale that they have and I get them for like $5 and change or something like that. A pan whereas sometimes they can be like $6.99 a pan in other places um, so I like saving money and I don't see if there's a problem with that so um, if I can get them on sale I will and they last forever as you can clearly see I've had these for a long time so I want to start with this darker blue and for this I, I do use a paper towel to kind of um, blot my and now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of pan out here a little bit so you can have like a bigger um, view. And I promise I'll, I'll go back in um, here in a second, but I just want you to see this part a little up close. Make sure your brushes are really clean. I, t I have a bad habit of using the same brush for resin and paint. Um, like I, I just use the same kind of, I use the same brushes for a lot of different things. So just always make sure you're, you really clean your brushes really good and that they're super dry when we go to use powders. Otherwise it'll get muddy and nasty. So I just pick up some of my color that I want and I just kind of beat it up against the paper towel and I crush up that powder so it's not as chunky. You want a nice good powder, but you don't want chunks, you know? You can find references, color references online. Um, if you if you need to have some references, that there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I like to put my darker blue down first, or my darker color. I mean, just go over those lines, and just make sure you repeat whatever you do on this eye with the other one. And remember, I think, well, you might not like it, but I like to have different like variations of color throughout the eye. I think it makes it look interesting. So we're gonna put that one down, grab some more blue. Don't hit the line so hard that you, cause the clay is still wet. This won't work if your clay is, is uh, cured. It, to me, it just it's a waste of time to try to do this after your clay is already cured. It doesn't stick. And uh, I've tried it, <laughs> and it just doesn't work. So you want your clay wet, but don't um, be very light and airy with your brushing so that you don't mess up your lines, your texture. And I'm going to check. I got a little bit more of a darker area on this eye, so I'm going to go back in doesn't have to be exact. I actually prefer that they're not because then they don't look like manufactured eyes and I hate that look like that. I don't know. Even with that kind of just with the CGI, um, that's one of the reasons why, and you know, I kind of don't use as much CGI because I don't like that perfect pear look. It just, to me, unless it's something like a print or something like that. I mean, I'm talking mainly for like um, more organic looking um, eyes, not so much the cool eyes with the designs and stuff in them. But like this kind of thing, I just prefer to have it a little bit different. So it's just more unique and fun looking. All right, that's my dark blue. Now I'm gonna move to a lighter blue. This pretty blue here, it's um, turquoise actually. I had a look, yes I did. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna pick up some of this on my brush. Pat it next to my other blue. Sometimes I'll mix it in together. There's actually a color blender, a colorless color blender you can get with these that works really good if you wanna blend the colors together. Um, I'll be honest with you, I haven't really messed with that a whole lot, but they do have it. So 
It might be worth checking out. All right, so, oh, I got a lot of powder on my brush. Hold on. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with this lighter blue. It's so pretty. I love blue eyes. And yeah, you could have used like a blue limbal ring too. I just went with a brown to just kind of show you that, you know, there's just so many different ways you can do this. There's no right or wrong way. It's just whatever you prefer. I'm trying to leave a little of the lighter color underneath because I'm actually going to be putting some orange and yellow in there too. And again, anything I do with a larger scale, scale, scale you can do um, with the smaller scale. It just depends on your own personal unique ability, um, like, you know, how how small of a scale you can actually go. Um, it does take a lot of, it takes a steady hand. It takes, um, you know, you have to be able to see at that scale relatively easily. So um, I personally hate making the smaller scale eyes anymore because it just, guys, it just really messes with my eyes and my neck. So um, I've really embraced it because my, my own work has kind of gotten a little bit bigger over time. Um, and this is just an easier scale for me to work in now. Um, but I just, I really don't like making those, sm <laughs> those smaller scale eyes anymore. And that's probably one of the reasons why I decided to increase the price on those a little bit more because they just take a lot longer for me and they're not as enjoyable anymore because they just, they're, they're painful, <laughs> but we need them. So, um, somebody's got to do it, right? All right. So there we go. There's a pretty blue. All right, I think I'm done with the blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and I don't blow that excess off. I really try hard not to waste. So if you put the lid on these, you, you don't have to lose that powder. Um, at first, when I first got these, I was like trying to like blow it off and I'm thinking to myself, that's kind of stupid, why am I doing that? So just leave that loose powder on the top and store these upright, that way you can reuse them. All right, now I'm gonna go in with this awesome blue. I mean, excuse me, yellow. Can't talk today. It's nice canary kind of yellow. Um, Diorlide yellow. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that, but we're going to call it Diorlide. All right. So I'm going to pick up some of this yellow. I love this yellow. It's so pretty. Oh, man, that is so gorgeous. Okay. Put that down on my paper. Kind of just beat it into my brush a little bit. And now I'm going to just go over and just do some pops of yellow in here. Oh, isn't that pretty? So pretty. And I know the question on everybody's mind. Do I bake the clay? <laughs> I will let you know in just a minute. Yep, I gave it a little blue there. Okay, so there we go. And I'm gonna go in with the same yellow. And I'm gonna put, oh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Too much. See, when there's too much on your brush, it kind of causes bad things to happen. Okay. Wow, I love that yellow, it's so pretty. All right, now I'm gonna kinda put them side by side and see if there's somewhat a, a match or a pair. And I've got more blue. You see that on this one? So I think my color just got a little bit skewed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in my lighter blue, which you're allowed to do. <laughs> I'm allowed. And I'm gonna just kinda see if I can't get a little bit more of that and unfortunately, when you mix these, obviously you're gonna get a different color. I don't want it to necessarily go green on me, but it is looking like it's going a little green. And again, this is also because I can't see as well as I normally do. Might have to go on the side here. Get rid of this darker.
changes the color. I'm have see this is why I don't like doing videos when I'm speaking because it's just hard. Yeah, see this one here. So normally I make like a whole bunch of these. That way if this happens, I'll still have a mash that would go with this one, but now they're starting to kind of change a little bit and shift into a different color. So um, what I'm gonna have to do to ma marry these up a little bit now is I'm gonna have to go over this eye with a little bit more of um, the yellow to kind of match it with the other one, which kind of sucks in a way because I wanted it to be more blue, but that's okay. Things sometimes just happen. So I'm gonna take some more of my yellow you just sometimes have to kind of work it, work through it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit more yellow to that to kind of make that blue not as intense so that it doesn't look like a completely mismatched pair of eyes. That's a little bit better. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, now let's talk about pupils. Pupils, you can do so many things <laughs> for a pupil. You can um, do a crater pupil, which is basically you just create like a hole with um, a small ball stylus and do, a, and do it that way. Um, you can use a bead. You can use um, just straight up resin. There's, oh my God, you can do, use so many different things um, for a pupil, so many. So in this case, because it's probably the easiest um, for people to start out with, I'm just gonna show you how to use a micro bead. Um, you wanna select a size that's gonna be, you know, somewhat um, along the line of what you want. Um, if you want more of an anime style eye look, um, then you want a larger one. But I just, I don't want nothing too big and I don't want anything too small. I wanna kinda show off the color. So I'm gonna probably go with something like this which is gonna be a little bit smaller, but you'll see where I kind of enlarge it. And I always check to see, all right, that one looks a little bit too small. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that one out. I'm gonna try to find another one that's a little bit more the size of the other one. Let's try this one. Yeah, it looks a little bit more like a match. All right. Because they're balls, you want to push them down to the point where they look like half or um, half rounds. So um, I'm just going to take my and be careful because if you slip, it's it's really terrible. Um, you put a big old gouge in your eye. It's I don't know how many times I've done that. I've been so upset, but just um, very carefully tap that down. I like mine kind of seated deep, like so. I'm gonna do the other one, not too deep, but I do like it deep, deep and set. I'm gonna try to do the other one on camera here. This is so hard to do, because I'm trying to see and I can't. Hold on guys, I gotta get it centered. Okay. And then just kinda ease that in. Oh, see, I slipped. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that or not. Hold on, I can't afford to do that again, so let me just go off camera for a second. All right, basically all I did is I pushed it down inside. And uh, that's what we have now. And sometimes if I don't push one in more than the other, then it kind of makes the eye look like it's uh, it's also not, you know, a, a good match. But again, you know, they're not manufactured in some, you know, lab somewhere. They're, you know, they're just, uh, they're not um, meant for that. So uh, this eye's kind of got powder all over it. I'm trying to scrape it off. All right, so there we go. There's this one and there's this one. Okay, so let's talk about whether or not we should bake these or not. <laughs> um, if you watch a lot of the very well-known, well-established ball joint doll eye makers, um, and a lot of them are um, Japanese, um, you'll, you'll see in their tutorial videos, um, if you're lucky enough to find them, um, that they do not cure the raw polymer clay. They say it's not necessary. Um, personally, because I've been using polymer clay for years, I know that, um, and so do most of us, we know that um, raw polymer clay does not do very well when it's up against plastics. Um, 
raw polymer clay tends to just um, react poorly with um, other objects that are um, plastic. So me personally, I feel if I don't cure the eye, that it could potentially um, end up causing a problem down the road with it, you know, just not, I don't know. It just, it just, to me, it just seems like a ticking time bomb, honestly. You know, resin doesn't last forever as it is anyway. I mean, it lasts forever, but I mean like the quality and the integrity of it doesn't last forever. I mean, you can prolong the life of these guys for many, many, many years if you handle them properly and you keep it out of direct sunlight and blah, blah, blah. But I mean, to me, it just makes sense that if I'm putting something in a, an encapsulated area for long periods of time, it's just eventually it's going to break down and cause a problem. So yes, I actually bake them. Um, I bake them at 230 degrees for about 20 minutes. I do not do a full 30 minutes. I'm using a very small amount of clay and I, you know, if they're getting away with not doing it at all, um, I think that at least 230 degrees for 15, 20 minutes is going to be good enough to, um, to keep any kind of reaction from happening. So, um, before I do that, I do want to add a little bit of um, micro pearl. Um, I'm going to use orange actually. I think orange will look really nice. We got a lot of yellow in there and I don't want it to go green anymore. So I'm going to use yellow. I mean uh, orange. I'm just going to clean my brush off real quick. And I'm just going to give a couple little quick pops of color in there just to kind of give it a little bit of a shimmer. I kind of like a little bit of micro powder just because it, I just think it looks nice. I'm just gonna kinda, this pink mat that I have here is a silicone mat and I love it. I love my silicone mat because I can do anything I want. It's heat resistant, it's, you know, I can put anything on, on it I want. It's nice and lace flat, it's just really nice. So if you're wanting something to, nice to work on a nice surface, this is a good thing to get. All right, so I'm just gonna um, go in with my micro, um, pearl, pearl powder and I'm just going to kind of just give it a few little little pops of micro pearl in here here and there I don't go too heavy with it just a little and I can't see if it's coming off my brush or not I think it is yeah it is but I think that's really pretty kind of gives a little bit of a sheen to it I'm going to do it with this one here too Gonna kind of give a few little pops here and there. And I'm rushing through these, so it's definitely not my the best pair of eyes I've ever made. But I think you'll understand basically what I do at this point well enough. So there we go. Now I'm gonna put these in the oven real quick, and I'll be back. Okay. So I just pulled these out of the oven. Um, they're slightly warm still, but we don't have to wait for them to be completely 100% cold off to move on to the next part. All right, so um, what I like to do next is um, I like to set my pupil and I like to um, bring out those um, patterns um, that we put in there. And so um, for this one, I think I'm going to start with black to enhance my pupil and seal the pupil, and then I'm going to probably use brown resin to fill in the um, the other uh, textures. So let me go ahead and there we go. I guess a little bit better. Okay. So for this, I personally use if I'm going to be baking my eyes, I'll use um, like at this if, if I'm going to be baking my eyes in a polymer clay sculpture later down the road, I will use um, UV Resin Hard <clears throat> by uh, Shao Shao DIY, this one. Um, it also comes in another package that is probably more um, recognizable to most of you. It's this one here, but it's the same product. I like the red label one. You can get that at oakartistemporium.com. I'll put the link in the description and um, it's got the English uh, version of the instructions on it, but uh, if I'm not going to, I love UV um, LED resin. Uh, this one here by Patico. Um, I love this one. It's the Star Drop. 
Um, it's got the highest non-yellow yellowing rating of all of their um, resins. So I do prefer this one. So um, it's up to you what you want to do um, or what you want to use. Um, I have some colors I already pre-mixed here, but I don't have um, any brown. So here in a minute, I'm going to mix up some brown, but I already have black. So um, I just want to make sure my black is fresh because for this, you need your resin to be relatively fresh and fluid um, because you want it to wick into those um, surrounding spaces in the eye. And you'll be able to see what I mean by that. But um, I just made this yesterday, so I'm just going to check to see. I guess it still has kind of a lot of fluidity to it. I think it can be still be used for this. Um, so basically, um, if you use too much pigment when you're using your UV resin, you run the risk of it not curing properly. Um, but usually, guys, I, I use quite a, I mean, not quite a bit, I don't want to say that, but I mean, I make mine very dark, but I just make sure that I don't go overboard with the pigment, and then I also make sure I cure it well enough and long enough. If you're not getting UV resin hard or Patico to cure, it is more than likely because, and I hate to say this, but it's user error. Um, as long as you have the right wattage lamp and you are leaving it in long enough for it to cure, you should have no problems with this product curing at all. It works very, very well, and um, I've never had an issue with it not curing. So I'm going to stick to my guns on that one and say most of the time it's just because um, the person using it might not be experienced with UV products and uh, may, may, might not have the right equipment. All right, so for this here, I'm just going to drop some on top of the pupil. Don't use too much because if you use too much, then it'll overflow and you'll have a big mess. Um, but I like to use a little bit on the top of my pupil to kind of help seal in my pupil. This also helps eliminate... Um, air bubbles down the road. Let me see if I can't get this here. There's like a sweet spot for my camera here. <laughs> and see my, my, my resin right now is a little on the thick side because I, I made it yesterday, I mixed it yesterday. So it's not wanting to wick like I normally do. So I'm just gonna clean it out a little bit um, out of my brush and I'm gonna kind of like force it into some of those lines. But I don't want all those lines to be like loaded up with black anyway. I wanna go over a lot of them with brown. So the fact that it's behaving this way is actually okay. I'm not gonna complain. So what you wanna make sure you do is get your brush down around that pupil area as well as you can, because if you're gonna have a problem with air bubbles, it's gonna be because of right around that edge there where the clay meets the bead or any, any opening where there could be air trapped. And you won't see it until you go to cure it or heat it and then all of a sudden it'll be a nice big nasty surprise waiting for you. So I just like to make sure I go around that pupil really well. Okay. I'm gonna look at it a little bit more up close for my own sake, guys, for a second, because I really hate bubbles um, next to my pupil. They can be anywhere else, but I don't like them near my bub my eye, my irises, or I mean, excuse me, my pupils. Can't talk today. So. that one I'm gonna just let it sit for a second and go to my other eye and just basically repeat what I did now um, I'm hoping that this video also kind of helps under people understand why um, ball joint doll eye or in eye artists in general um, charge what they do because it takes a lot of time to do this and a lot of patience and it does take some skill and um, you know it's just um, it's a lot of work <laughs> But if you enjoy it like I do, it's worth it, you know? It's worth it because um, you can create some really amazing eyes for your work and it's unique to you. And unlike CGI where anybody can have those images um, and have the similar looking eye, you have something truly one of a kind. All right. 
and I'm not dogging UV or um, CGI. I actually use it myself for a lot of things. I'm not saying that. I just think that it really is just, there's nothing like a hand painted eye or an eye that's done this way. Okay. I'm gonna look at it up close real quick and make sure I'm happy and make sure there's no bubbles. I just like my, I just like my um, pupil to really be nice and dark and I like it to be really nicely sealed in there where there's no air or openings around the edges. And I feel pretty confident with that. Um, again, there could be a little tiny bubble hiding out. This is why you always cure in layers. Don't ever get impatient and try to just dome or whatever. You need to do layers or else you're gonna have Bubble City USA. So I'm gonna look at these both. I think that they, ooh, I got a hair or something in that one. Here we go. So I think that they're looking pretty good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pop these underneath my UV lamp for a second and then we're going to do a little bit more resin and the brown so um these are the colorants here that i use this is um pat by patico um this is the brown and this is the black these are the two i'm using today brown and black always shake them up really good <laughs> The opaque ones are more importantly need to be shaken, but um, and I don't really need that much, so I'm just gonna do a little tiny. That's a little bit more than I wanted, but that's okay. And you can buy these silica. I. I, you know, I use silicone to make my mold. So anytime I have leftover silicone or anything like that, this is actually a pupil mold that I purchased like forever ago off of like Alibaba or something. Um, <laughs> and uh, it works good as like a, a mixture pan. I don't really use it to make pupils. I could though, but I don't. Just preparing my brown hair. And so when those eyes are done curing, I'm gonna hit it with some brown. These colorants are, um, they're not opaque, they're transparent, but you can, you can make them a little bit darker without running into much trouble, um, you know, but you just always wanna be careful that you don't use so much that it won't cure properly. look up close right. so I have this now so I'm gonna take some of my brown and now I'm going to fill in with a very small amount I'm gonna go over the lines the texture marks that we put in earlier with some brown and if it pulls a little bit it's okay it's not gonna be the end of the world But I like it. I like just getting it into those cracks and crevices. This is also going to help with bubbles. It brings out the lines and it seals it so that you're not going to have a bunch of um, open spaces and little nooks and crannies for bubbles to get trapped or air bubbles to get trapped. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of the brown. I've got to do this off camera, guys. I'm sorry over the top of my pupil and I want to check it again for there we go for air bubbles if you hear me stop talking in the middle of the sentence it's just because of the it takes a lot of like focus all right um And this is the other benefit of curing a clay. But you can you can apply the resin, in my opinion, a lot better. And 
you don't lose the colors, but you can also be a little bit more aggressive with your brush and without ruining your design. And also it sets that other base color so you're not lifting the other colors up and ruining that. There we go. All right, so now for this layer, I'm also going to go ahead and pop it back into here. Now, um, I know you saw me put resin down first, but you can also hold off on doing that. And before you do that, you can add in your, your I call them specs. <laughs> um, you can add some specs, spackling, or speckles. Mm. Okay, so for this, I'm probably going to use brown or gold, probably gold. <clears throat> That's my burnt sienna, hold on. For this, I usually use these um, golden high flow colors, acryl acrylics. I love these paints, by the way, for, for this. Just make sure you shake it really, really well. And you only need a little tiny, tiny bit. This is silicone. <laughs> and a dish. That paint that you're seeing is kind of underneath. So you only need a little tiny. I mean, that's so that's way more paint than you'll ever need to do this. <laughs> and you're going to need a super, super, super fine brush and you don't want to have any little hairs sticking off of it or anything like that it really needs to be extremely pointy and precise for this and um i'll show you the one that i'm going to use but i'm going to take a little bit of this fuzz off the tip of it that i just noticed um i can't help i use alcohol to clean my brushes and i know that's probably a big no-no to a lot of people but i use so many different products um, with my brushes that I just use, I just use alcohol and I buy these brushes, um, pretty much by like the dozen. So, um, I'm going to use this one here and you can get smaller ones if you want, but this, this one usually does pretty good for this, this part of it. All right. So you can choose whatever color you want. But you do need to be careful. All right, so I'm gonna pick up some paint and just kind of roll my brush into it so that I don't lose my tiny, tiny tip that I have. And just get some paint on there. And now um, this is gonna be challenging for me to do <laughs> on camera. I'm gonna try to do this without hitting. Yeah, this is gonna be hard. I'm gonna try. All right, so for like this one here, I might just put me a little tiny dot like right there. I don't even know if it made it. Oh, okay, I see it. A little tiny dot right there in the corner, you see it? I don't know if I was on or off camera just now. Let me go ahead and apply this guys off camera. I'm so sorry, I can't do this underneath my camera. But basically you're just putting some random specks here and there. I like some of them big. You can use several different colors if you want to. You don't have to just use one. Just don't overdo it. Because if you put too many, it starts looking weird. Like right there is good. For me. I mean, I might go in like at a later time. Like if I had a different, um, if I wasn't doing this video, I'd probably, I might go in with maybe a little bit of yellow and do some yellow also. But I think for this purpose, for this video, this is fine. Sorry, I'm off camera. But it is hard to do as it is. 
you can do this with um, smaller eyes too. Um, so if you want to practice making these little tiny dots, you can get them so small that it actually looks really, really cool um, on the smaller eyes too. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stop there. Um, I did paint these on top of the resin. You can actually wait for the resin and do this first, but I kind of like the floating effect that it gives when I put it on top of my resin. So we're just gonna go ahead and let these dry real quick and then we'll be ready to start sealing the um, entire eye and then doming. We'll be back, yay. Okay. Um, I cheated and I actually put a little bit of blue resin on some of the other areas because um, I didn't like how I lost a lot of my blue um, in the beginning. So I just went ahead and added a little bit of blue um, resin highlights in there. But right now I feel pretty good about this. And so I am really ready to dome at this point. Um, my paint's dry and I feel good. So with that being said, I'm gonna put that over there. Um, for this particular process, what I like to do is I like to put my eyes on, um, I like to like put them on something like a little stand. So I use corks. You can get these all over the place, craft stores, whatever. Um, they're kind of like a dime a dozen <laughs> out there. And um, I saw a Japanese um, ball joint doll artist use them and I'm like, wow, I have a ton of these. I'm just going to, and I never knew <laughs> what to do with them. So they actually work really well with Tiki Tack. So if you just put some ticky tack on the back of the eye, then you have these nice little stands that you can use to hold and move it around. So um, that's just another little tip, tip -a Okay, so um, I like to um, pour out my resin in advance, my clear. Um, this helps to eliminate bubbles and as long as you cover it and no UV light can get to it, it'll stay fresh. So um, I like to do this because it helps release air bubbles before I go to um, dome my eyes. And this process is just so tedious that I like to just make sure that I don't see any micro bubbles or anything in my actual resin before I apply it. So um, I'm just gonna give it a real quick, good, quick, up close look here. And I don't see any dirt or anything like that, so I'm good. Um, so let's go ahead and start this. I um, apply this first layer using my my brush like I do everything else I'm just gonna make sure it's really super clean and dry before I start picking that resin up don't ever make the mistake of using a dirty brush when you go to put your <laughs> oh my gosh I don't know if I had a, a nickel for every time <laughs> start to sound like my parents okay um here we go so um let's go ahead and hold it in one hand and do it this way so I'm just gonna go ahead and start first with sealing again that pupil. If you're gonna have an air bubble, that's where it's gonna show up, right around that darn pupil. I hate it, it drives me crazy. So just kind of fill that in and then just continue to kind of put like a very thin layer on the rest of the eye. So you can actually also add some additional micro um, pearls or glitter or something to it if you want. But I'm making these a little bit more realistic and I already do have some orange mica in there so I'm not going to do that. I'm wearing gloves so it's a little bit harder for right now for me to um, use a lighter. Um, but if you have a barbecue lighter or anything like that that you can use to get down inside there um, to pop bubbles, now would be a great time to do that. You just want to be really quick with your, just want to be really quick, quick with it and not let it, you know, hit it too hard. And just really look closely and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm sorry I'm off camera, but um, some things you just have to kind of be able to see what you're doing. Um, but just really pay close attention. And I'm telling you right now, those bubbles can hide like you would not believe. They can be real buttheads. So just make sure you really get down in there and really search and destroy those bubbles. 
because if anything's gonna drive you crazy, it'll be that. And again, anything and everything I'm doing right here can be done on a very small scale. You just have to really have the patience for it and the eyesight for it and the steady hand for it, but it can be done. I've done it and I still do it, but I just don't like it. <laughs> Here we go. This is gonna be the first layer and I'm gonna go ahead and throw these underneath my lamp real quick. And this, these are just tall enough where they still will slide right into my lamp. And I'm using a Melody Susie UV lamp. You can use whatever lamp you want. I'm not gonna get into that because as long as it's the right wattage um, for the product you're using, then you should be Gucci. For my fantasy eyes, I don't really worry about bubbles as much because I actually kind of like the way that it looks. But with the more realistic looking eyes, I, I don't like a lot of bubbles in my work. Okay, so I took my glove off of my one hand um, so I had a little bit more control, so I apologize in advance um, for the state or condition of my fingers, um, but you know, I'm not a hand model. So um, anyway, um, <laughs> these are ready to dome. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and increase a little bit more here. Hopefully you can see my lighting is the, isn't the greatest at the moment. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and dome these guys. And for this, I use a ball stylus. Um, honestly, the bigger the iris, the harder it is to dome. Um, you would think it would be the opposite, but it's actually not. Um, it's just not. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pick up some of uh, my resin with my ball stylus. And this actually helps to eliminate bubbles and um, gets an even drop. It's already going to drop. Hold on, sorry. Here we go. And boom. I put a little bit into each one first just to kind of start it off. also something that's very difficult to do without it being super close to me. I'm going to do my best. See how that is starting to like spread out real nice. I'm going to, while well, this one's sitting here for your viewing pleasure, I'm going to check this one out. <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and move the resin around a little bit so that it's completely covering the entire iris area. You want to make sure it gets all the way out to the outer edge, um, but you don't want it to overflow. It, I mean, if it does, it, it's okay. It's not the end of the world, but it's kind of a pain in the ass once it gets to that point because then you have to clean it up and then it wants to keep dripping. And so you really kind of want to try to keep it in the center um, as much as you can and away from the um, edges. You don't want it to overflow. You really don't. So I am just kind of going over the eye right now with my stylus and moving that resin around so that it's nice and flat and all the way to the edges. This is, um, it, I guess it's considered another layer. <laughs> honestly, but um, to me, it's, it's, it's just part of the doming process. So these guys here, another reason why I took off my glove is because I use my lighter a lot on this. So I just kind of make sure that I go over it to pop any bubbles. Be very careful when you do that. I know I've given that warning out so many times, but really guys, be careful with that. <laughs> um, for this, I'm going to go ahead and back out a little bit. I'll, I'll Zoom, zoom back in in here in a minute, but I need more room here. Okay, so um, I feel good about that on both of these eyes. Now you can either pop this back under your lamp again for a second, um, or you can use your UV flashlight, your little torch here. 
I'm just gonna hit them with my UV torch. If you use this torch an awful lot, or any UV light for that matter, guys, invest in some blue blocker glasses because um, you don't wanna be looking at that UV light all day. It's really not good for your eyes. It's actually really bad. <laughs> so just get some blue blocker glasses and throw them on. You can get them really cheap at like Amazon or something, but. Now this will not cure the resin all the way. All this does is it does a freeze cure or a quick set. You need to complete the curing process inside your lamp. That's all that it does. It does a quick cure just to kind of set it so that you can still continue to work without, you know, having it to be a problem. All right, so it's it's good enough it's, it's good enough to go ahead and do another layer, even though I probably would stick it underneath my Melody Susie again and really zap it good with UV before I did this next layer. But for time purposes, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it, it's good like that. Now I'm just gonna go ahead. This is where I'm starting to get some height. Um, dome height is a preference um, and it's also technical too because if you have a certain doll, and I'm just now getting into the ball joint doll universe, most of my eyes are meant to be used in art dolls, um, ball joint dolls, but um, art dolls that are not a specific size or brand um, that, you know, you basically create the doll to fit whatever eye you make. It's kind of different. You know, um, ball joint dolls, sometimes they have, um, depending on how they're made, they might not be able to take a, a high dome or they might require a very low dome. I like my dome somewhere between medium um, to, to lower I don't like them too high and I don't like them too low. I like to have some depth with my eyes. So that's, you know, kind of where I, where I like to, you know, to, to be with my eyes. So I just kind of build, keep building the dome to the point where it's like I'm happy with it. And um, sometimes I will flip them upside down and I use a bubble level to um, make sure that they're completely, um, you know, level but in this case this is good enough so that's my first eye I'm gonna go ahead and pop it underneath my Melody Susie this time but first I'm gonna give it a quick little snap with my lighter just because this is you know you just don't want bubbles I don't see any bubbles but you don't want them showing up unexpectedly either not at this point you've got a lot of work invested and believe me I have lost eyes at the very end and have wanted to just I don't know, scream. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and get this one done. Now you, can, you can pull that resin around to fill in all the little spots. Just like I said, be careful that it doesn't overflow around to the, you know, you don't want it overflowing onto the white. Sometimes you do with certain designs, but not with these. You want that resin to stay nice and right where it's supposed to stay. This is the part where you can lose all of your work, so it's kind of it's kind of tedious. So you can see it's kind of flat. I'm probably gonna raise the dome up a little bit more, but you see how nice of the color and the clarity there? And that's because of all those beautiful layers that we were so careful with, really to keep all those bubbles out. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, make a little bit of a higher dome and I will be right Guys, back. You ready? Here they are. <laughs> and you'll notice too, even as careful as I was, there's still a couple little tiny bubbles that came to the surface after I was done putting the dome. And it's, you know, it's just, it's going to happen. 
Um, I will show you in a different video how I get rid of those little guys, but if you do it, if you do your resin in layers, it's not like a horribly hard thing to get rid of. You basically just make sure your resin is super, super cured and hard. And then you just take a razor of some sort and you just kind of like dig the bubble out. And if you're, if you're doing it in short layers, then it shouldn't be too hard for you to get down in there to remove the bubble. Then you just sand lightly the whole entire eye um, with a sanding pad. And then you just re-coat, you know, just take away all of the sanded residue and re-coat your eye with your resin and it's completely fixed. You won't even notice that it, you even did anything and you have no, you have no bubbles. So there you go. I hope that this was helpful. I like how when you move it, it changes the, the light shifts. Um, but I hope that you found that the video was helpful for you and um, enjoyable. Um, I know that um, I'm not exactly what you would call a professional um, video vlogger, whatever you want to call it, but um, I do my best to show you guys how I do certain things and um, I promised my customers that I would show you. So um, if you enjoyed the video, um, like I said, show some love and I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. If you have, if you have any questions, you can post them down below or you can message me directly and I will do my best to get back to you. Thank you. Happy eye making. Bye.